Good morning, everybody. Back to my subject. You know, this is a subject I've been running with a few days, and I noticed I've got a lot of feedback. And uh, many have been asking me how they go about dealing with it. So today, I just want to deal with the other side. I want to deal with the masturbation side. I dealt a lot with the pornography side. So today, I won't really zero in on that. I just want to zero in on the masturbation side, but I'll keep this short. And then in my in my next video, I'm going to go into the ways in which you can stop this. And I'll give very, very practical methods from a Christian standpoint. And you know, when it comes to masturbation, I'm aware that a number of leading teachers in the faith have taught and suggested that, well, first of all, let's begin secular. As far as the secular circles are concerned, they are saying there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's healthy. There are a number of circles that have even suggested that uh, you must be, you know, ejaculating three times a week in order to avoid prostate, uh, you know, prostate, is it prostate? Cancer. Because, you know, you get rid of whatever it is that, you know, increases the likelihood of such problems. That's what they say. So they say masturbation is good for you. You must do it regularly after all. It's self-love. And it's a way of keeping yourself away from other worse vices. Well, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is, uh, well, among many, is the one where Paul states, and I quote, All things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial. We could argue all day, for example, about the drinking of wine and alcohol. Okay? We could go all day and argue about it. And to be perfectly honest, if you really dig deep into that, is drinking of alcoholic beverages like wine an issue? Well, depending which culture you're from, it's permissible. But is it beneficial? See? Because that's, that's really the question. Okay? Eating of meat, okay, meat in all its forms and shapes, isn't a problem. You can eat all the meat you want. I mean, come on. All things are permitted. After all, God showed something to to Peter and said, do not call what God has called clean and clean. So meaning all animals can be eaten, all vegetables can be eaten. So they are permissible, but are they beneficial? I can tell you as a health practitioner that actually meat, animal protein, is, has got some of the biggest carcinogenic and health, uh, negatively health inducing problems you can imagine. Out of foods, if one is on a 100% vegetarian diet, they are more likely to live a longer and healthier life per chance than a person on a meat diet. And that's not to say there aren't people that have been on meat diets that have lived long. I mean, come on, we've got chain smokers that have lived for, 100, for over 100 years. So that, you know, it, it's the exception that proves the rule. But other than that, it is not beneficial. It is better to have less red meat in your diet. In fact, if you can move to vegetarian diets, you are far healthier and better off than individuals that do that. So sugar is permissible, but it's not healthy. Uh, a lot of animal fat is, is permissible, but it's not healthy. So in the same way, masturbation may be physiologically okay. It may be okay scientifically. It may be okay as a means of releasing pressure, but is it beneficial? And you see, that's what I want to deal with. I want to deal with the challenges of pornography, but purely, first of all, from a scientific standpoint, and then I'm going to move to the spiritual standpoint. And for me, I think that's where the big deal is. So let's begin with, very quickly, I'm, uh, like I said, I try not to make this very long, so I want to make this quick. Let's begin with the physiological effects of masturbation. So the question is, what's excessive masturbation? Once a day, you know, once every two days. Well, what's excessive? Or, you know, three times a day, five times a day, what's excessive? Every, every person's different. People have got different libido and drives. So it's a, it's a highly argued point which is difficult to pin. So what is excessive to one may be completely nothing to another. So excessive is very relative and very subjective. But whatever the case, excessive has certain issues. First and foremost. Number one, number one, in terms of its physiological issues, it will weaken an individual because uh, people have to understand that uh, the act of sex itself and, and, and self-stimulation 
draws a lot of energy from an individual. That's why there's the heightened breath. That's why there's the dilation of the arteries and the, the increased heart rate. All these things happen because of getting into this self-stimulation business. So as a result, if you do that more regularly, you definitely weaken yourself. I'm not even going to go into the... the um, esoteric meaning of sex transmutation and the releasing of energy and what that does to an individual. I won't even go there. Let's just stick with the fact that it will increase your weakness. It will also increase fatigue. So a lot of people who excessively masturbate will find themselves more fatigued and more tired easily. Okay, Because they drain themselves of that energy every time they go through this act. Now this is purely physiological. This is scientifically true. The other aspect which a lot of people don't like to hear but is true for men, this is for men now, is premature ejaculation. This business of self-stimulation can become hardwired in your mind and you become overly sensitive to get on with the business real quick and release yourself. And so what this does is when you now get into a real relationship, you are unable to to you know satisfy your partner because you are ejaculating quickly and finishing your business in a short moment somebody laughed about it but we call it the chicken anointing and that's where an individual is unable to to sustain themselves for long and this is this is a very unfortunate situation but a lot of people suffer from it and what has been what has been proven is it's a result of excessive masturbation so one has to be very careful with this one. And this is for men. Okay, this is for men. And then it also lowers libido. It lowers libido. I mean, if you are supposed to have a healthy sex drive for your spouse, for your wife, for your husband, and this is true for both sides, this excessive masturbation lowers your libido, meaning the drive for sex is lower. And a lot of times if you find couples where there's a disinterest in sex, two things are happening. Either they're getting it elsewhere or they're masturbating to release them, their pressure or relieve their pressure. So which means when it comes to the time when now you should have your conjugal union, that does not happen because obviously somebody has already, you know, been satisfied by this self-touching arrangement. So this is a very, very serious thing and it is a big issue, all right? And then, like I said earlier, it drains your energy. Uh, your spiritual energy and this is something which again I'll go deeply into when I get to the spiritual you know side effects of excessive masturbation in fact of masturbation but it drains your energy it drains your spiritual energy it it puts you at a place where your spirituality is lowered immensely this is the reason why those who are into aesthetics those are into asceticism. Those who are into living a pure and holy life. It is demonstrated without doubt, regardless of which religion you're from, that this business of, pardon my language, but ponyo ponyo arrangements actually drains you. So it lowers your spiritual alertness. And I'll, I'll go further into that when I get into the Christian side of things. So it's absolutely a detestable habit when it comes to purity and trying to live right so this will certainly mess you up but like i say also it definitely you know will bar intimacy with your spouse you know because when you get into a situation where you are doing this arrangement on the side how are you going to be intimate with your spouse you can't be intimate because your energy is all dissipated in this uh, act of masturbation or self-touching so it's very dangerous in that regard. So these are the areas that are what I'm going to term physical, the physical effects of masturbation. Now, um, I'm going to go into the spiritual side. And this is the one that's, uh, you know, it's, just, it's, it's, it's a bit um, on the fringy side. But, you know, if you're a reader and a researcher like I am, what I'm about to tell you isn't some, some jargon I created to scare you. This is real. And you really have to think deeply about your habits. And if you're a young person watching this, if this has been shared with you, take seriously what I'm about to tell you and realize that this, what I'm mentioning now spiritually, is real. 
Like I say, there are great teachers and men of God we respect out there who have said there's nothing wrong with masturbation. They say it's just okay. I am here to tell you it's not okay. And I'm going to show you from a spiritual side what the issue is. So number one, you see, masturbation as a general rule of, uh, of, of, of uh, thumb is born of lust. Okay? It is something that comes because we lust. It's amazing. Jesus said, if a man so much, you have been told do not commit adultery. But I tell you, if you so much as look at a woman and lust after her, you have committed adultery with her in, a, in, in your heart. Job said, I made a vow before my eyes that I will not look with lust at a young maiden. Let me tell you guys. I, I, you know, This is like a joke, but it's true. If you are a um, habitual masturbator, have you ever tried to masturbate and not think? Have lustful thoughts? Um, pictures in your mind? Anybody who tells me they masturbate without you know, pictures in their mind is a liar. Absolute liar. It doesn't happen. You, your mind has to connect to this act. So you start to imagine things. And that's really what it is. In fact... Probably before you even begin masturbating, you probably saw something that came through your eye gate. You saw something that began to arouse your mind and get it into a state of sexual thoughts. And it is that which then drives you to become quote unquote horny. And then when you're horny, what do you do? You then resort to masturbating. And when you're masturbating, your mind is filled with lustful thoughts. Let's be real here. Let's not pretend. Okay? It's a very uncomfortable subject, but it's a fact. Okay? So when you get into that, that means now you're lusting. Is lusting one of the fruit of the flesh? Absolutely. Galatians 16. Read. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh includes what? Four ad activities, adultery, fornication, licentiousness, lewdness. All these things have to do with lustful thinking. And you see, when you get into that state, something else happens. It will inevitably lead to pornography because it is the nearest accessible thing. I mean, these, you know, the, the, this new generation are, are in levels of temptation that I, I, I can't even begin to imagine. Like I always say, in our past generation... To find a, a pornography was a process. If you go back 40 years ago, it was even harder because in Europe they had to go into these dingy theaters where now they would show pornography all day and then you'd be in there. So very, very funny, funny theaters where they show adult films. And of course, you do not want to imagine what's on the floor in those places. But then we had the videotapes. Video became a powerful medium video and uh, DVDs became a powerful medium for transmitting the stuff then we had p uh, pay TV there were a number of channels that were on satellite uh, setups especially in Europe where you could you know subscribe to these pornographic channels the red hot channel and whatever they were and you know all these channels were just full of pornography from A to Z and so people would subscribe to those and of course they would watch and access pornography Today, it's on your phone. It's just a matter of a few clicks and you're on. it's there. Now, let me tell you, people who are habitual masturbators who start lusting and using their mind reach a point where they say the mind is not enough. I need to see something so that I'm visually stimulated. And so inevitably, they slip into porn. I assure you, you know, pornography and masturbation are like a phone and a SIM card. They go together and work very effectively. So there is very few people that masturbate without pornography. It's, it's a very tiny number. In fact, it's a number of people that are not yet aware that there's this powerful tool called pornography which can be used. So let's be real here. Most people who masturbate will inevitably graduate to porn. And for others, unfortunately, it's the porn that got them masturbating. But whichever case it is, it all comes back to the same thing. It's a phone and a SIM card. They go together. All right? And this is where the problems come. Now, at that stage, what's the next spiritual problem that develops? This whole business will then lead to experimentation. So for a number of people, they want to take what they see in those pornographic videos because remember the more you are exposed to porn the less 
the more tolerant your body is of the stimulus. It's no longer giving you that effect I talked about, the dope, the, the dopamine effect and, and the endorphins. They're just not coming at the same level anymore. So you seek more and more thrilling and more bizarre stuff to get you off. And inevitably, for a percentage, it will come into reality. For a number of them, it will give them an occasion to get into adultery and fornication. Guaranteed. A whole bunch of them. Because they want to now go try what they watched in those porn scenes in real life. And since they can't do it with their spouse, they'll go do it with somebody else. This is what pornography leads to. But then things actually get worse. Here's another aspect spiritually which is very bad. The other aspect is that this whole business of pornography centers on what I call selfishness or self-absorption. You see, when God created sex, he used it as a means to create bondage between a husband and wife and create very powerful unions. And the endorphins that are released powerfully when a person ejaculates or, or, or orgasms as a woman, those endorphins flood the whole body, the brain, everything with these powerful uh, to, um, uh, hormones called oxytocin, which are the bonding uh, hormones. The challenge with people who do it with images is that oxytocin is flooded and it bonds a person to pictures. That's extremely dangerous. So they become bonded to pictures and images and videos, not to a human being. God's plan was that you bond in that way with a partner, a wife, a husband. That's where that bondage should take place. So that this bond seals you. Oxytocin is the same um, hormone released when a mother is lactating a baby. So when babies are sucking um, uh, from the mother's, you know, breast, there is a strong release of endorphins and oxytocin. Oxytocin bonds the mother to the child. The love for that child is flooded all over the mother. In fact, oxytocin is the same chemical released when mothers just finish giving birth, they get a flood of oxytocin and when the placenta comes out, they have the maximum amount of oxytocin. So it does two things. One, it makes them quickly forget the pain that they went through in giving birth. But secondly, it creates a strong supernatural bond between themselves and the babies. Now, of course, there are a few unusual crazy mothers who will throw that baby away, but the majority get a very strong bond created right there when that happens. And that's why this bond becomes difficult to break. This is what in spiritual circles would call a soul tie. So a tie is created spiritually between the individual and, the, and this particular situation. So they are bonded either to pictures or to real human beings. So the problem with masturbation, and especially masturbation around pornography, is this juxtaposition and short-circuiting of a natural situation that should lead to a bondage, but instead it leads to something worse. It's self-absorbed. So it's about itself. Okay? Another thing, again, spiritually, which is quite dangerous, but very true, is that masturbation is also used as a coping mechanism. Hmm? You see, some people go through pressures and issues in life, and when they find themselves in this situation, they have these emotional challenges, and one way in which they uh, eliminate these emotional feelings is to use masturbation and sexual gratification for themselves as a, cope, as a coping for whatever deficit they're having. It's the same story even with those that go and sleep with prostitutes and those who sleep with women and use women as a, uh, as, as a tool. This is, this is them trying to cope with an empty hole in their heart. And so they think if I sleep around, I'm going to get rid of that emptiness. But the, what they finally realize, which is very strong, is that the more they sleep with people, the emptier they feel. There's a hole in their heart and they're trying to empty, to... to, to Fill it up by using masturbation and other sex. But this sexual gratification is a way to fill up this hole. But the hole is empty. 
they can go. And these are the type of people that will be changing sex partners and that hole never gets filled. Because it's a deceptive illusion. So some, many masturbate as coping with emotional issues, like under pressure, stress, whatever, they'll masturbate. And then others will go have sex with whoever so that they can cope with this emptiness. Now let me go to the more deeper spiritual stuff and close with this. Uh, this is the stuff that's now in the fringes. Another thing you do with masturbation, which then leads to fornication and adultery, is that it is a door. Okay? It opens a door. We call it a gateway. When you get... <clears throat> one thing you have to understand is when you get into masturbation and, 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 and the like, you and pornography, you reduce your holiness. The, the Lord... It, there is no scripture in the Bible that forbids us from, fornicate, from um, uh, masturbation. Just like there's no scripture that forbids us from smoking cigarettes. Or even, you know, J. Or even taking drugs, shooting drugs in your veins. Nothing stops you from doing that. But here's what happens. When you get into these things, you are lowering your purity. And especially with sex, you are lowering your purity in the kingdom and in the things of God. Your holiness, your being set apart, your walking in righteousness, all that stuff, forget about it. Let nobody cheat you. Even if a person is involved in sexual sin, you, you think you can go in the presence of God with all that crap and still get the same spiritual experience? No way, Jose. I, I tell you as an individual that prays on a regular basis and has encounters with God and Jesus every day, you're not going to get the same encounter when you're busy with that crap. That crap lowers you spiritually and makes you more banal, more, more carnal, more fleshly. That's what that stuff does. The unfortunate part is that for, a major, for many people, this is now a seesaw they get into. High up with God, then they masturbate down here again. Then they have to fight their way back to the mountaintop, high up here with God, then they masturbate down here again. I mean, and, and to be honest, yes, all of us struggle like that. But this is why I always say, what the heck do you think Romans chapter 12 verse 1 is about? Therefore, offer up your bodies as a what? As a living sacrifice, as a reasonable act of service. In worship to God. That's what the Bible teaches. This business of offering your body as a living sacrifice means dying to self. Dying to all this rubbish that includes masturbation. Now, let's go. You open doorways. That's what I was saying. You open doorways for spiritual entities. These are gateways. The devil loves individuals that are into this sexual crap. Because for them, they are a walking doorway. The enemy will use that door to come into your life and wreak havoc. With, it's almost like a get out of jail free card. He has access to your heart. He has access to your life. He can wreak havoc and do all sorts of things in your life because you are continuously opening this door through your act of masturbation. There's something else that some people don't realize. That these various spirits will also take advantage, especially those who are in the habit of masturbating before they go to bed. You, you have to understand that our minds and the realm of dreams is a spiritual doorway. I can show you tons of scriptures in the Bible where the, 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 the dreams were the way in which God would communicate with people. Dreams were the way in which God would warn people. I can give you tons of examples. Jacob had a dream and he dreamt about the doorway or gateway to heaven. You know, in, 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 um, in, in Genesis chapter 25, you know the story. He dreamt and saw a doorway to heaven. Joseph had multiple dreams uh, which, in which God communicated about events on the earth. You know, uh, Herod had the wise men. Those wise men were warned in a dream. Joseph, the father of Jesus, was continuously warned in dreams and, and told about situations through dreams. You have to understand that God speaks through dreams. I mean, for crying out loud, even non-believers, we have, what's her name? We have Nebuchadnezzar. He had a dream. It was his dream that literally brought about the whole interpretation of the book of Daniel. It was a dream of a heathen king called Nebuchadnezzar. You have um, Pilate's wife. Pilate's wife 
had strong dreams about Jesus. She even told the husband, have nothing to do with this holy man. I had dreams about this man. Please do not have anything to do with him. I have seen him in my dreams. Now, dreams are doorways to the spiritual. See? Now, some of you are in the habit of masturbating before going to bed. So what are you doing? You are literally opening a doorway for dream demons. Now, dream demons are not, are not some you know, figment of the imagination. As a person that had studied deeply the occult, I understand what dream demons are. They are astral beings. They come through dreams. There are people right now who are tormented by dream demons. One of the doors that are tormenting you with dream demons are this habit of masturbation. These doors that you open. So when you open these doors, especially as a believer, you find yourself in that and you listen to a teacher who tells you masturbation is just fine, it's all okay. You are opening doors to the immoral spirits of dream demons, which will now come to you in your dreams. The things that you are watching on your, on your phone or wherever you were watching them as you were doing your business, those things will now open a door in your mind and dream demons can use those doors to come in the form of a dream. You start dreaming of having sex with these demons and creatures and you don't even know that they're dream demons and creatures. Most times for those who interpret dreams and understand spiritual dreams, any dreams involving sex are very, very, very spiritually heavy. And when you start dreaming of dream, um, so having dreams where you're having sex with things in your dream, be aware that that is a door that you have opened and you are under attack. For some people, this situation degenerates to a very bad point where they actually end up with what in Africa are called spiritual husbands and wives, but what in the occult is known as incubus and succubus. Now, incubus and succubus is not a new concept. This goes way back, way, way back to the Babylonian era. This stuff has been around since Gnosticism began. Everybody who's understand, who understands demonology knows that the concept of an incubus and a succubus is not new. So some of you have been asking me about Lilith. Lilith is an example of a succubus. So the succubus comes in the dream, in the form of a woman if you're a man dreaming, or in the form of a man if you're a woman dreaming. And this thing will have sex with you in your dream, and you will actually experience everything as if it were a real experience of sex. And what you don't realize is it's a spiritual entity. So these things are very real. There are people who are plagued badly by these because they opened doors. Some were dedicated as children and these entities visit them regularly. Others are, are by blood through their families and others opened the door because of their excessive habits that they picked up somewhere along their teenage into their adulthood. And some people have failed to have normal relationships completely. Let me tell you, and I'm not in any way scaring people here, but there are some people who failed lamentably to have a relationship and to get married. And let me tell you, you have to understand that some of these people, the reason that that is so is because there are entities that have knitted with them. You know, as you sleep around with different people, you're picking all these entities and somewhere down the line, one of them sticks with you. And from that point onward, every time you get into a relationship from nowhere, the relationship ends. Every time you get into a relationship, it looks promising, things are going to happen. From nowhere, the relationship ends. And you go, what's going on? Why do people not want to be with me? It is because there are entities in your spirit realm that are knitted to you. They are bound to you. You open the door without realizing and they hover around you and they continue to assert their presence in the lives of those people that want to connect to you. And when people realize without understanding, without any, any sense, they don't even know. Even when you ask them, why did you stop this? They don't know why they stopped the relationship. It's because those entities are knitted to you. And so... You must break this. And so what I'm going to do in my next video, not this one, in my next video, I'm now going to go deep into the way in which we break free of these. And it's not as difficult as you may think. 
It just requires commitment on your part. It requires you choosing to be a living sacrifice, which unfortunately the majority of people are not willing to do, and that's why they fail. They fail because they are battle for the flesh. The flesh always wins over them because they walk in the flesh. The Bible says, walk in the spirit that you may not fulfill the desires of the flesh. The problem is we have too many fleshly Christians. That's the reason why they can't even sit in sermons in a church because they are so interested in entertainment. They are too fleshly. They want to be moved in the flesh all the time. They want goosebumps at every service. You know, those are the most vulnerable. You ought to know your God. You need to be deeply rooted to your God through his word. That's where we get strength. Not in preachings, not in entertainment going on in these churches. That's why so many of them are vulnerable to this crap I'm speaking about. That's why so many of them are not seeing deliverance. They are going pastor after pastor, church after church, conference after conference, and they are not being delivered. So in the end, they live secretly with these sins and they indulge in them every single day. You know what I'm talking about. You're not walking in power because you walk in the flesh. You live in the flesh. You are a fleshly Christian. Anybody who walks with hatred in their life, anybody who walks with unforgiveness in their heart, anybody who walks with witchcraft by wishing others dead, anybody who walks in those levels is a carnal Christian. They are not a spiritual Christian. Spirituality teaches about forgiveness. Spirituality teaches about love. Spirituality teaches about you know, ascending beyond the pleasures and, and issues of the flesh. You need to walk in the spirit. That's what the Bible teaches. Walk in the spirit that you may not fulfill the desires of the flesh. We have too many people walking around in the flesh and they call themselves Christians. And the problem is that flesh they walk in Everything they do is tied to that fleshly thinking. That's why they are hounded by these issues. You do a, a research. I've, I've only seen the researchers from Europe about how many Christians are in, in pornography, are involved in pornography on a daily basis. You, do, you find out the research. There's been powerful pure researchers about how many Christians, in fact charismatic Christians, that are bound in sex. According to the research from Porn, uh, porn, the book, I forgot the name of the book. It says that over 75% of men, Christian men who are confessed believers, indulge in pornography. That's scary. 75%? That means you're telling me for every four Christians, three are involved in pornography, only one isn't? Mm. So now, if these people are walking in the flesh line, how do you think they're going to walk in victory? In Christian victory and, and demonstrate victory. How are you going to demonstrate victory in your Christian walk when you're busy doing ponyo ponyo ministries every night? How? How? If you're busy sleeping around and saying, no, this is part of ministry, after all, the grace of God. Rubbish. Rubbish. It is not the grace of God. It is your flesh. You're walking in the flesh. God said, be holy as I am holy. He called us to walk at a standard of holiness. This is the standard God requires of us Christians. Don't be deceived by this message that people are telling you that it is okay. You go around sinning, God is okay. He wants you just the way you are. Yes, it does. Yeah, in a way. But you are going to minimize your ministry, your effect. Effect. Your impact in this world will be minimal to non-existence. Your impact to your family will be non-existence. Your impact to people around you will be zero because you're in the flesh. Walk in the spirit and embrace the Holy Spirit and see the power you start to walk in. See how your words and your life begins to transform people around you. Because the supernatural power of God starts to flow through you. But not if you are busy masturbating every night. And you think you can pray and then the next day you go and you flow in power? No, you won't. If you flow in power, it's a fleshly power. If you flow in power, it is a power from the dark side. It is what I call a kundalini spirit power. That kundalini spirit power is something straight from the pit of hell. Imitating the Holy Spirit is not the Holy Spirit. It is a counterfeit spirit. And that's what a lot of people are doing in these churches nowadays. It's counterfeit spirit. It's not God's spirit. But if you walk in purity and holiness, you walk as a child of God and you are not in the flesh, 
You've learned to forgive. You've learned to love. You've learned to walk in humility. You are patient. You are kind. You are gentle. You call on God. You live a life that is pure and pleasing to God. And we know that you can't obviously get yourself saved by works. We don't advocate for works, but I'm talking about purity here. Purity. Are you walking in purity in Christ? And if you walk in that purity, my brother, my sister, the power will flow. People will see something different about you. But not if every day you're busy masturbating and then you keep being told, no, it's okay. It's not okay. And that's why I've done this video today because I just want to clarify that if you want to do it for health, for health reasons, do it. Just know you're not flowing in the spirit. You'll be fleshly and you'll be appeasing the flesh. All things are permissible, but not all things are are beneficial so you can do whatever you want in the flesh you can drink your wine if you want it's in the flesh you can eat all the rubbish and become as fat as a pig if you want that's okay it's permissible but it's not beneficial so in my next video i will break it down i will now take you through how we break free of this and how to maintain it because you see we are in a world where we contend daily with the devil don't think that when you break free, the devil is happy. No, he is scheming, looking for ways and means to draw you away from your victorious walk. He will find ways. He schemes every day. That's why prayer never ceases. That's why standing guard and watching never ceases. Because he is looking for a way to bring you down. So I'm going to share how you become victorious one of these days. I don't know when. And then I'm going to tell you how you sustain it. All of us have to sustain it. Even where I am here, it's not like me, I'm any better than many of you. No. But the difference is every day I strive to sustain my victory in Christ. Every day I wake up in the morning, I know I must contend for the cross. I know I must contend for my victory. I know I must contend for my territory for my domain i'm not gonna sleep the bible says watch and pray that you may be counted worthy to escape these things that are shortly to take place upon the face of the earth of the earth and be found standing before the son of man you must contend my friend pray without ceasing that's what scripture teaches some of you you can't even pray for two minutes two minutes you can't pray the only time you pray is in church when you're with the other people you can't pray on your own. Where's your personal prayer life? You don't have a prayer life to talk about because you've bought so much into this message of grace, grace, grace. And I'm not belittling grace, but I think these people have overdone it now. They've made wishy-washy, fleshy Christians who do not know A from B and no wonder they are... The devil is mopping the floor with your face every day. That's what he's doing. Because you can't walk in power. Because of the compromise, especially sexually. Massive compromise in that space. The other one is unforgiveness and pride, but I won't talk about those today. It's sexual immorality. That's what's plaguing many Christians today. That's why they are weak. That's why they can't walk with impact. That's why they cannot transform lives around them. That's why your families haven't even believed that you're saved. Because you can't walk in power due to what you do. So that's my message for today. You be blessed and I will catch you at my next message where now I deal exclusively with how to beat this. How do you overcome this and walk in victory? God bless you.